Hey guys, it's Tuesday. Time for another Tom Girl Tuesday. We are on episode 45, and I'm with guitarist, Fender Play rep, and cat lover, Jen Tranny. Stay tuned. You're tuning into the destination for TV superfan discussion, After Buzz TV. And now, let the buzz begin yeah so cool. we got the cat lover in there yes hey guys welcome back we have a very special <laughs> special guest jen tranny here today these are a little this is her tunes right now we yeah. listen up magic it Ooh. is i love it it's all dance <laughs> it gets you in that mood right yeah, oh yeah oh yeah i just listen to myself play and dance you know <laughs> do you do that a lot around your place <laughs> yeah i don't have a lot of friends so you know i gotta just make create the music and then uh -huh. create my own vibe. dance party yeah, yeah. candles candles wine yeah. Flowing, I see it <laughs> with my cat. Now that right. you, I didn't think you were actually gonna throw up my cat in the very beginning. I thought you were gonna make me seem a little bit cooler, and then we kind of throw in. I was gonna wait for it, but you you threw it out there yesterday, so I'm like, I'm just putting it out there right now. So let's talk about that. Well, first, tell everybody where they can follow you on social media. You can follow me on Instagram at Jen Tranny, J E N T R A N I. Um, uh, Twitter, uh, Jen needs a nap, and that's true. I need a nap uh -huh. uh, most days, <laughs> several times a day. And then just Jen Tranny official on Facebook. So I mean, right. anywhere you want. And I threw out the cat because you have a cat named Soup. Yes, right. I have a cat named Soup. Yes. Real quick before we dive into you, got it? Where the name come from? I really wanted to irritate my friends with a dumb cat name because all my friends just had cats and they loved them, and it took me a while to like like cats. Mm -hmm. I was very confused by them. Yeah. Um, and so I thought, oh, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna figure out the dumbest name to irritate them, because and then I, for, the first one was Staple, and they wouldn't let me get away with that. And then I said Soup, because I was just looking around my apartment like, what do I have? <laughs> <What's that laughs> oh, I have Soup, and then it just it stuck. And I love it. He's a he's a dum dum, and yeah. it's amazing. And I have a tattoo of him and. Oh. Yeah. It's ridiculous. I was going to ask you. Oh, yes, yes, yes. He is my best friend. <laughs> <laughs> I get that. My dog is my best friend, too. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Uh, we're going to get into your tattoos later, too. That's oh, something great. I want to ask about. Great. Okay, so cool stuff. Yeah, yeah. yes. Guitar playing and tattoos, <laughs> yes. not just cats. <laughs> yeah, I guess we'll do that, too. <laughs> well, let's start with the guitar playing. So you, I think we have a picture of you at a really young age here with oh, a guitar. So let's first talk about how you first began playing and where this love started. This love. Oh, that's that was uh, that was taken um, last week. That was, <laughs> <laughs> <Nice>. Last week, <laughs> I just got my hair cut. Yeah. Um, when I I loved music, um, my grandmother bought me a record player, record player, and um, I just loved it. So I kept trying to get into some kind of instrument. I played saxophone for a half a second. I was horrible at that. Uh, piano, horrible at that. And then my mom had a guitar up in the attic. And I was like, hey, I want to try that. And so for my 13th birthday, she got the guitar restrung and like mm -hmm. she we had this little hard shell case and she put um, my initials with stickers Aww. with little music note stickers. That's cute. <laughs> and um, I got this little VHS of like how to play guitar and and I said I just want to do this on my own. Like I don't want to take lessons. I just want to figure this out on my own because uh, I'm super shy, super, super shy. And so I think just having the thing where I could kind of figure it out mm -hmm. on my own terms without being so like vulnerable in lessons or being kind of told what to do mm -hmm. was really important to me. So she's just like, cool, go for it. Cause she didn't really have to spend any money on it. Mm -hmm. And um, I just, it, I, I had like a stop and a start in the beginning where I wasn't like, I was learning stuff, but it was so boring and I'm learning from this book and it's like, hang down your head, Tom Dooley, and just like these super happy, uh, like I'll show you, like, like these really pretty chords, just like, and I'm 13, right? You know, playing chords like this does not speak to my anger, <laughs> my 13 year old anger, you know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. in my angst towards, oh, everybody. <laughs> so I just was like, this is dumb and it hurts and whatever. And so I stopped playing for a little bit and was bored and I came back to it and I watched this video and they had Scarlboro Fair. And they had, uh, the, it opens up in the video with this E minor chord. And I remember hearing it and just going like, there it is, mm -hmm. this is everything. And then I learned like these super dark chords. 
like, this is it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to start writing songs. And I just wrote horrible, horribly sad songs <laughs> that I made my mom listen to every day when she got home from work. <laughs> you know? And um, it was really just on from there. I don't, I don't know why. I, I really do say that I think that the, the guitar picked me. I don't know why. I don't mm -hmm. know why this stuck. It just did. Mm -hmm. And I haven't stopped. It's been, oh my God, it's been 23 years mm -hmm. and I haven't stopped. So great. <laughs> Let's talk about some of the things you've done over those 23 years because you've been in the Jen and Abby band. You've mm -hmm. been in a lot of different things. So kind of talk about how the growth and the progression of, of your career. Oh my gosh. Well, I mean, you, you saw me how, how many years ago? 10 it's years? At least it, 10 to 12, I think. Yeah. yeah. It was a it's while ago. It's been a while. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I came out to LA when I was 19. So like 17 years ago. And, um, like I said, I'm very, very shy and had this really long hair. Do you saw me with the long, long hair or had, I, I think this... it was still short. I think it was like, here. okay. Okay. When I but first yeah. started playing with Abby, just like long, long hair. And I would just sit on the stool while she did, you know, mm -hmm. the Abby thing, uh -huh. uh, and uh, and just like look down, and I was just so painfully shy. Um, but it was it was Abby and another group that I was playing with. This guy's name was Sasha Sackett, and we toured a bunch. And they the that band forced me out of my shell because we had like these performance rehearsals, and they'd be like you need to kick, kick your leg. And I'm like, oh, no, 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 <laughs> <laughs> what is happening? And the band's like, it's okay. You're a lead mm -hmm. guitar player. Like you need to, whoops, mm -hmm. sorry about that. Sorry about that little <laughs> bumblebee. <laughs> um, like you need to, you need to go for it. And so I got trained to be able to perform and then, Man. With them, like through yeah, yeah, yeah. and because we, we toured a bunch with that band, and then obviously um, working with Abby Miller, she is a a light. Mm -hmm. She's a tornado of a light, mm -hmm. <laughs> and to have to match her energy and her enthusiasm, you know. So she she comes into play also later when we talk about like the videos. Mm -hmm. Um, then, cause then I was playing with Abby, doing some other stuff, and then I started doing the tutorials for a company called Mahalo. And it's funny because, again, like super, super shy, not wanting to be in the spotlight. But I start doing these tutorials and they're like, hey, can you make it bigger? Like when you're teaching guitar. And so the first couple tutorials are an impression of Abby and my mom. Because <laughs> that's the only way I knew how to mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. I was like, well, I'm just going to imitate this because I don't know. This uh -huh. is not how I talk. This is not who I am. <laughs> So that, so it just, I have been very, very blessed in the people that I've been able to work with that haven't fired me and just said, mm -hmm. here's what you like, come here, mm -hmm. get this, do this, do this, come back in a week or, you know, whatever yeah. it was that, you know, none of this came naturally to me. None of it was easy or like, you know, when we, especially with musicians or artists, we think that like, Oh, you just have it or you don't. Mm -hmm. That's that's not true. It's so not true. Mm -hmm. Cuz I didn't have it, but because I got um very lucky with so many amazing mentors and collaborators to say this is what you need to do. Mm -hmm. Then I started to get more confidence and then more tattoos. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the tattoos came in more guitars. <laughs> Can you talk about how that was emotionally a little bit for you? Because I know, because I struggle with that same thing. It's like you want to, there's this artist side of you, but then we're also very introverted. Mm -hmm. and it's So kind of how you felt yourself shifting and going through that and like gaining the confidence and, and being more comfortable. In front. So, so I remember the show that it happened at where I was like, oh, I have, I have power to entertain or have power over the audience because this uh, guy, Matt, who was the Sasha's manager, was the one who was doing the performance rehearsals. And he was like, look at me until I look away. You know, you know I'm an audience member. Look at me until I look away. And, oh, and I hated that. Mm. I was just like, I kind of like look and then, you know, turn my head. <laughs> and he's like, no, do it again. And so we were doing a ton of these performance rehearsals and we had a show. And I remember being on stage and, and, and playing a lead. And I looked at somebody, some tall woman in the audience, and I didn't look away from her until she, until she looked away. And I kind of kept doing that. And then at the end of my solo, like the crowd erupted. Mm. And I remember just going like, 
oh my gosh, that he was right. Like I have, I like people are wanting to connect with me mm -hmm. when I'm on stage or connect with the artist, you know, that they're seeing. And um, if you give that back to them, you know, they will follow you anywhere mm -hmm. you know they'll mm -hmm. be so loyal and and appreciative and then also for me getting that energy back because i wasn't you know yeah. like this and hiding from like oh i'm gonna hide behind this microphone mm -hmm. you know like i hope nobody sees me you know so yeah. then i was able to receive more mm -hmm. and give more so it was just like a, I, it was just a really slow progression of like oh this can actually be fun to have an intimacy with the mm -hmm. audience and to be there with them during the show. Mm -hmm. And I watched your instructional videos like on YouTube and stuff. And what I th felt was I was like, gosh, she's so just natural. And like, mm -hmm. I thought it was great because it was like, I, I, I even had the thought of like, how should she just like, I felt like you, you were talking, sometimes, you know, you see like, you're not talking to anybody or mm -hmm. you're just out there, but I felt, no, she's like connecting to the, like, she's so just feels comfortable and owning her stuff and like very knowledgeable, of course, of what you were talking about. <laughs> so, I mean, I, I wouldn't have never guessed that you like struggled with that or, you know, had problems doing that. Well, but the, the funny thing is, is that, um, I was actually just talking to my mom about this <laughs> when I was a kid. I'm not joking about like the no friends thing um, that we got like a little video camera and I would stay in my room and like play guitar and like talk to the camera and do like little skits by myself. So that seemed very normal because the thing is when we're recording, there's nobody there, mm -hmm. you know, and sometimes I'd have a producer and sometimes the producer would be out not even in the room doing editing like live editing. So I'm literally there by myself. So to me, that was easy because mm. I'm just like, la, 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 da, 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 da. you know, and then you yeah. put me in front of like an audience and I'm like, Whoa, dear. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah. So that's that's uh, I've gotten that feedback before, too, of like people are shocked that, you know, they think I'm an extrovert. Mm -hmm. I'm like, no, I'm an extrovert when I'm by myself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I can yeah. do whatever I want. <laughs> Yeah. Well, these videos, you got like millions of hit, hits on them. And then we'll also talk about, so then you're working with Fender. So could you maybe show, um, we were talking about maybe going through um, something you would show people, beginning guitar people on a video like that. Like yeah, guitar, sure. Like, Absolutely. Give so, a little sample of what you guys might get. A if little you, sample. But definitely go on YouTube and check out all of her videos. It's highly educational and entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> well, basically, you know, what I love to do is I love to teach beginners, you know, and, and kind of foster that, that initial, um, passion for it. So a lot of the, a lot of the videos are going to be very beginner of like, okay, we've got this chord. Now, how can we build the coordination to get to the next chord and to build the confidence? So it's a, it's right now it's a, with Fender. I do a lot of tutorials. Um, so actual songs playing pretty much anything mm -hmm. <laughs> that you want. I think I'm doing, I think I'm doing, um, salt and pepper tomorrow, salt and pepper, <laughs> salt and pepper tomorrow and like Vance joy and stuff like that. Mm. Um, but on my own channel right now, I'm taking the approach of, or I'm trying to integrate like mindfulness, but also a really specific way that you can learn technique, um, at any level and not to be afraid of technique or theory or something like that. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times when, when we start to learn, um, we learn a couple chords, we got like our G, we got our D, you know, and it sounds good, but we do this like, and then pause, 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 right? And then, uh, and then uh. we're like, well, we can't, can't really play a song. So I'm showing you, okay, like this is how you start to build the coordination in your fingers and it has nothing to do with, like we were talking about yesterday, like the music gods bestowing some talent or something on you. It's all about training. That's it. That's it. So it's, it's a lot of that and, and, and really working on the mindset of the instrument and, and how you approach it. So it's a little, it's more, it's more than just, and here's this chord, and here's this chord, and here's this chord, because the thing that stops people from doing anything, you know, and, and including playing guitar, is their mindset mm -hmm. towards it, M majority of the time. It's they don't believe they can do it, they put up roadblocks, 
in their way. They don't even start. Mm -hmm. You know, all these things that go, it has nothing to do with your physical capability. And I, I'm trying to dispel all these myths about how you can get good at music or how you can be, what's the word I'm looking for? How you can be, um, passionate or uplifted by music or really be in a creative process with music that will take you further than you ever thought you could go. Um, but it's really, it's about changing your mindset more than getting your fingers to hit the right chords. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. And when we talked about that, I know you said too, it's also something just when you touched on it briefly earlier, like not just in music too, that in all aspects of people's lives, like yeah. you help them see through that, see through some things that might be blocking them or things that they're scared of. Yeah, through. exactly. Cause that's what you have to address. And then, and it's like, also, I feel like for a long, long time, I kind of used my own experience to like victimize myself of like, see, I'm not talented at it. It doesn't come easy to me. Like, that's why I can't do it. You know, mm -hmm. like all the things that we kind of say to stay in that of like, see, Mm -hmm. See, look, it's just reinforcing my belief that I'm not good enough. That's how I talk in my head. Me. <laughs> me. <laughs> it's really funny yeah. to be around me. <laughs> That's why my cat is my best friend, because yeah. he doesn't, can't understand what I'm saying. <laughs> um, I don't <laughs> <laughs> the power of you know pushing through and getting out of our own mental oh, blocks yes. and things we yes so <laughs> it really it wasn't until the videos uh starting to do the videos that i realized how powerful my learning experience was because everything that i've learned i've had to fight to learn right it mm -hmm. didn't come easy i had to figure it out like chip it away to the smallest possible grain for me to be able to understand it. And so when I started doing the videos and when I started teaching, it made sense to me to work with beginners because then I was like, I remember that feeling. Mm -hmm. Like I remember that feeling with this D chord and I talk about it a lot of like, like my middle finger would not stay down. I remember that. Mm -hmm. I remember being in my room with like my cranberries and my Atlantis Morissette mm -hmm. posters, Joan Osborne over here, <laughs> some Marilyn Manson back here. Yeah. <laughs> so it's starting to get a little rebel rebellious. But I remember like having to hold my poor middle finger down mm -hmm. and as it was shaking and just being like, just stay. And then it'd come off and I'm like, just please stay. <laughs> so I never lost that, that sense for what it felt like to be a beginner. Um, and so then it became easy for me to break stuff down for people because I, I just remembered mm -hmm. it because I had to go through it and still have to go through it every time I practice. So that's when it became something that ended up being um, such a blessing to me. And that it kind of took the victim thing uh -huh, <laughs> out of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are there any tips that you see common problems like when people begin like, oh, yeah, these are the like maybe three things they all try to do wrong or like something that you learn or, or mm -hmm. some advice that you give to newbies? The, uh, the big thing is stay relaxed. So a lot of the times um, what people want to do is they want to, you know, grab the neck like a baseball bat because it's about control. They think they have to control the neck and just like, oh, okay, I'm going to, you know, I got this. But really it's dropping your hand down and having this space here and knowing that all the energy is like coming from, your hand, not your forearm, not your shoulder, not coming in like that. So really it's about learning to relax. And same with your picking hand. Now the big thing with picking is that everybody wants to like, same thing, like grab the pick and just muscle it, you know, muscle it with their forearm. And I would l love to encourage people to just try to stay relaxed more than try to go fast and muscle through it. Because this to me, sounds better than kind of doing the sorry if this is going to be loud but kind of doing the like yeah right mm -hmm. if you have control if you have um relaxation it's going to sound better so i'd say just try to relax everything and breathe and make sure that you're only holding the pick with the thumb and the first finger that's big and Please, no planting. Try not to plant right here. Because again, like people just want to control what's happening. Say so it's going to be a lot easier in the end. Like with anything, if you just relax. Mm -hmm. If you just relax, 
most likely it's going to be easier, right? <laughs> yeah. Stuck in traffic, just try yeah. to relax. Mm-hmm. Like whatever Breathe. it is. Right. Having a fight with your partner, just yeah. relax. Playing guitar, just yeah. relax. Yeah. So, yeah. Ah, great, great tips, everybody. <laughs> um, so now you work with Fender. Um, yes. Do you have, let's talk a little bit more about that. Oh, like exactly the kind of things Fender. you do for them. And I think you get to try all different types of guitars and ukuleles and things with them. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah, let's talk, <laughs> tell us about that. <laughs> That's um, got to be fun. Oh my gosh. Fender. Um, oh, I just love Fender so much. Mm. They treat me so well. Um, Fender came about um, six years ago. Uh, and they saw me through the videos from Mahalo and, and asked me to do some demos for them. So I did this whole series with the Squire, the Squire mm-hmm. guitars when they did all the mods for them. And that was just like, I mean, I, w- it, I was crying in the hotel room. I was crying on the plane. I was crying when I got the email when it said, you know, <laughs> so-and-so yeah. from Fender. Just like, what on earth is happening? What is happening? And... um then they would call me, you know, every once in a while to do some demos, like acoustic demos or whatever. And then they started this, um, they released this line of guitars, which is the Paramount series. And I got to be the brand ambassador mm-hmm. for that for two years. Again, just like, mm, okay, <laughs> cool. Um, and then you know, they started Fender Play. And because of my teaching experience, I got to be one of the first couple teachers along with this guy Dave Nassie and um, Matt Lake and we got to kind of be the guinea pigs for how they were going to start shooting um, content you know Mm -hmm. uh, uh, teaching content and again it's such an honor to work with them and um, yeah then they asked me to do ukulele and and there's several Mm -hmm. other teachers that are just incredible just incredible that really care about teaching Mm -hmm. we're all so it's not just like you know how sometimes you hear people talk about teaching and maybe especially with music we're like yeah i'll just teach until yeah this these these men and women teach because like we love it we're obsessed Mm -hmm. with it we're obsessed with helping people and understanding how to to be better at what we do and so just they've assembled such an incredible team of people doing Fender play. Like I said, it's an, it's such an honor to do that with yeah. them. Tell everybody where they can watch those or how they can find those. So you can go to uh, fenderplay.com and right now there, I think there's like a 30 day free trial. So it's all course, course based. So it's not just, you know, on YouTube, it, just tons of videos of, of like, Learn this song, learn this song, and mm-hmm. I'm, I'm guilty of that too. <laughs> but what Fender's doing that's totally different is that it's course-based as well. So you can be completely like out of the box, never played, and it starts you on mm-hmm. your course or on your path of like understanding you've never played anything and getting you the terminology. So if you go to Fender Play, I think there's 30 days free and um, learn how to play songs. I say just try it. If you've mm-hmm. ever wanted to mm-hmm. do it and it's free, just like, go try it. The teachers are great. And, oh, you know what's great about it also is they have a Facebook uh, community that once you join Fender Play, so you can, it's a mm. closed cu- community that all the teachers and everybody who works at Fender in, in that department are on. So if you have questions, if you need to reach out, or just like, I'm struggling with this chord, we're all there answering questions. Awesome. So you, it's not just like, Here's a bunch of videos. Good luck. Yeah. Bye. It's like we have a real time community that and that are also helping each other. That's wonderful because I think it's always great to be able to have sort resources like that where you can, you know, because it's like fine to watch something, but sometimes it's nice to just be able to go at like, to, hey Jen, I can't. I'm struggling with this. What do you recommend? Or you know, to have that more personal interaction with people is great. Yeah, absolutely. And then you can still be, you can still do it at your own pace, um, but then just check in, mm-hmm. you know, and mm-hmm. you know that. I, I would have done, if if I would have had (laughs) Fender play when I was 13, that would have been like perfect for me. But isn't it great for you? Like looking back, like you said, you were like introvert and scared to do, but because you like put yourself out there and did those things that this dream company of yours then found you because you were willing to put yourself out there on those YouTube tutorials and and just keep going. You know, I'm sure there was times you were like, oh, that sucked or that wasn't good, but you just kept doing it and somebody noticed and... 
You can't Look talk to me like that because I'll start to cry. I can. <laughs> I just love stories like that because it's like, you know, I love when people fight through, you know, mm. fight through things and you could have, you could have quit. You could have stopped. You could have been like, oh, that one sucked. I, what am I doing? I, I suck at this, you know, and you mm. just kept doing it. And then finally now here you land one of your dream companies and you're going to do mm. this fun, amazing stuff with them. Yeah. Like I, yeah, I can't, I can't talk too much about it because <laughs> I absolutely will cry, yeah. we, but it is, it's surreal to me because again, uh, like no natural talent. I'm from, you know, Wheat Ridge, Colorado. You know, my mom pretty much raised me on her own. You know, like she was a nurse. She was a nurse for 20 years and then built up her own life to be able to support me to build my life. Mm -hmm. And then like I came out just like so naive and green to LA. Not very good. <laughs> Not very good at all. You know, I went to school for music yeah. and really, really struggled. And it just, I just got lucky because I had people that kind of caught me because there were definitely times, there were some very big moments in my life where I said, I'm done. I'm tapping mm -hmm. out. You know, LA is hard. Yeah. LA is really hard. It's so rewarding, but you got to have, a, mm -hmm. you have to have a strong stomach and thick skin mm -hmm. to be able to deal with the ups and the downs. It can right? beat you down. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And, um, and there were times where I'm like, I'm, I'm ready. I'm tapping out. And something came along. It was just like, maybe not right now. And I'm like, oh, okay. that's how they get you too. Mm. This, this town does that. Mm -hmm. Just about when you're ready to like be off, oh, forget it. It's like, beep, beep. yeah, a little email you're comes like, oh. in. You're or just sign. Like, yep. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. And that's what I love about this city. Yeah, but too. again, like I just, I'm so lucky to have been able to learn the lessons that I needed to, mm -hmm. to get better. Mm -hmm. So yeah, mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> uh, let's talk about uh, your touring as well because you just got off a big tour and you yeah. So let's talk about more your actually live shows and that, yeah. that tour. Yeah, I oh my gosh, this was an incredible experience. I got to tour with Adore Delano, um, and she was on American Idol and Drag Race, and this was top five best experiences mm -hmm. I've ever had in my whole career. We got to go to the UK and um, I think we had seven shows and I mean, her fans are just incredible, like incredibly supportive, incredibly warm. They love her, but they're so passionate about her and her music. And mm -hmm. I love the music. It's like, it's like late nineties, early 2000 mm -hmm. rock. Cool. Did yeah. you listen to did. You yeah. Listen to it? Listen. Yeah. <laughs> oh my awesome. gosh. So that's like, it's funny to me cause I'm, I'm older than she is. So it's like there uh, that th that generation is like learning about the nineties. <laughs> it's like I uh, uh, I was there when that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so it's 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 kind of fun to feel like I'm reliving my formative years in music mm -hmm. with people who are discovering like this kind of music and this kind of rock, and man, it was just great. And I really felt like she supported me to be. Uh, the, the kind of player that that is just big mm -hmm. and you know because I can't it's outshine her. big yeah I can, there's no way there's nothing I can do outside of like lighting myself on fire <laughs> that's gonna outshine her and that feels great for me because then I can go big and know that I'm not stepping mm -hmm. on what she's doing or like taking anything away from her because she like she's one of the most incredible incredible yeah. performers I've ever worked with so it's yeah. fantastic and then um, Sherman was a bass player and Kenny was a drummer and they, they've been working together for a long time and they, I just felt so accepted and like right off the bat. Cause you, mm -hmm. you don't know, mm -hmm. you know, like I, you know, met them like a week before you don't know what they're going to be like in the van or, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. it's not just like, okay, I'll see you tomorrow for the next, it's like, you guys are together. Yeah. And, uh, I just know, felt yeah. very supported and very okay. like. No, go for it. Mm -hmm. You want to spin around and do all this stuff? Do it. And like I said, the audiences were crazy. The last show was in London. Sold out 800 people. Mm. I've never heard screaming that loud in my entire life. I had earplugs on and it was still hurting <laughs> just standing on the stage. Oh. And it was really cool because um, my one of my friends that has known me just about the same amount of time as you uh, mm -hmm. saw me and Abby play like when we were just starting out was at that show oh, and so it was, like That's... she knows so we were mm -hmm. laughing afterwards of like she knows the road that I 
went on. That this, whatever this thing is that I am right now, took a long time mm -hmm. to get there because she saw when I wouldn't look at the audience and, you know, now yeah. I'm like sticking my tongue out there, yeah. <laughs> solo and putting my foot on the monitors and yeah. stuff like that. So that it was really cool to be able to, to look at somebody who was, has been there for a long yeah. time and go like, see your growth. Yeah. Too. Yeah. Share like, it with I'm you. just a nerd. Yeah. I don't know what's going on. How did this happen? <laughs> So yeah, I would encourage everybody to, especially if you're like rock, check out Adora Delano's whatever album. Mm -hmm. She's got some good dance albums too, but man, this, the whatever album. Oh, mm. I love it. I love it. Who are some of your other musical inspirations? Oh man, you know, the one I always go back to is Lindsey Buckingham, the, you know, guitar player mm -hmm. for Fleetwood Mac. Mm -hmm. He's so underrated, and I think he's just fantastic. I try to emulate his soloing style especially a lot um, because what I love about his playing is that he knows how to serve the song. He's not just like and he knew how to support Stevie Nicks and he knew that when it wasn't his time to play and I love that element and I don't think he gets enough credit because he knew when to step back mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I think that's really special. So yeah um, and jazz influencer, jazz blues, Kenny Burrell, oh my god. I, I just want to play like Kenny Burrell. <laughs> But those are the, I love like, I still love um, singer songwriters. Like that's what I grew up on. I love it. I'm working with this artist, uh, Mary Lee Ruin, mm -hmm. who is incredible. She's an incredible singer songwriter, guitar player. And just, um, it, it's the same thing that drew me to Abby. Like I love powerful female singers that are a little bit, quirky or a little mm -hmm. bit you know like not like the yeah yeah yeahs you yeah. know and you know things like that or even Cindy Lauper was like the first one Cindy Lauper was one of the first records I ever got so that kind of quirky doesn't fit the mold entirely but still like in your face mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. that is my jam who would be if you had your dream of one person to play with oh man I had one. You know, the, the bummer is, we're going to take this down a little bit, but um, the bummer is I really wanted to play with Cranberries. And, you know, she passed mm -hmm. away. And I don't normally get very emotional about celebrities passing away because um, I don't know them. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but I, it, I cried for two days about mm -hmm. that because she was so influential and I wouldn't be playing if it wasn't for that band and her. And again, quirky female lead singer mm -hmm. that did something totally different. So I, I think also part of my grief was that I kind of hoped at one point, like I would be able to, mm -hmm. to, yeah, mm -hmm. to play with them or at least like tell her thank you or something yeah. like that. But, um, man, to be honest, anybody that, anybody that would just love to play with me, <laughs> like want to play with them. Yeah. And, and the, like I said, playing with a door, that's going to be a high standard <laughs> mm -hmm. for, for the next one. Yeah, 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 yeah. exactly. Yeah, exactly. Let's talk, let's talk a little style here because I know yeah. you've said a little bit how, how you had the long hair and how it evolved. So mm -hmm. let's talk the choice and how it felt like when you cut your hair short and let's talk about some of these tasks. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I can talk about this all day. Is this interview going to be like six hours yes, long? Yes, we might. Yes. This is great. <laughs> You're my favorite person to talk to. <laughs> hey, just talk about it. <laughs> it's all about you. Everything you like. We should have brought your cat in here. We oh, have just, your cat too just all night. <laughs> Be like, this is amazing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, the style evolution. Yeah. Um, what happened? I don't really know. I blame Abby for the tattoos because the first tattoo I got was our our little album. I remember when I saw that in picture because I had that album. Yes, yep. yes. So that was the first one. She always wanted a tattoo. I never did. And she really wanted to get one for our first tour. And I was like, okay, you know, I really love our album artwork that was drawn by Adam Jeffries. And um, I was like, okay, cool. Let's just go, let's go ahead and do it. And then we got it. And we were sitting, driving to the next show, and she's like, are you okay? I said, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm thinking about what I'm going to get next. So then I blame Abby. I blame Abby Miller. I blame you. I blame you, Abby. Did she get the same this. one? No, she got a song title. She got okay. Be Still. Um, so I blame Abby for, for all of my tattoos. Uh, and that's what I tell my mom, too, that it's Abby's fault. <laughs> um, but, yeah, just kind of, it just, 
I'm addicted to it. <laughs> Are they all animal or some sort of animal? Uh, they're oh, not no, I guess quite. They're not. No. There's some. Des- there's like some design things, but it's like it's a lot of animal. I don't know why. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know. I just like animals. Yeah. They're quiet. They're awesome. <laughs> animals are the best. <laughs> they, don't, they don't question it. <laughs> right. And they're just love. Just pure love. They're just love. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and then with the hair, you know, I I think part of it was that I, when I came out to L.A., I was still very much hiding um, who I was because I wanted to be the one to say who I was um, without somebody, like, reading me. And so I grew my hair out really long and I liked that for a while, but also it was, it was a crutch because I wanted to hide. I wanted Mm -hmm. to disappear. So kind of like as I came, came to as a performer, the hair started getting shorter and shorter and shorter because I used to just have short hair when I was a kid. I was made fun of for it, but also I had bad haircuts and I shaved the side of my head Mm. myself. So it wasn't entirely, (laughs) (laughs) wasn't entirely their fault for, I was a weird looking kid. Um, but yeah, as I kind of came into my own, it, this the mm-hmm. style just started to happen, and then I got the the mohawk. And I, I, I I'm gonna be real with you, okay? I'm okay. Gonna be yes, please totally do. Totally real with you. <laughs> the original mohawk was because somebody had broken up with me. <laughs> so wanted, Motivation. Yeah. I wanted to. I wanted to impress them and get them. <laughs> revenge haircuts you know yeah like the revenge look of course yes. yeah so i'm keeping it real for you <laughs> I love that it. it wasn't Honestly, this was not just like divine intervention of like yeah. now i'm coming into my own it was definitely it was definitely like well if i do this then show me i'm cool yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> that didn't happen <laughs> That did not happen, but you're better off without that. You know, I, like, yes, that is that is that is very true. I'm sorry to any of my exes, but it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's true. You're better off without me as well. <laughs> mm. But um, yeah, it's just kind of like going for it, mm-hmm. even if it was a weirdo ex move. And then it it the the hair kind of came as the videos were really getting popular and. I kind of felt different in a good way. Like I was finally ready to stand out Mm -hmm. a little bit more. And then it just kind of progressed from there. But it is, yeah, it just took, oh, I don't know, 12 years. Yeah. (laughs) Everything's a process, Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it is those big life things like that that fortunately do push us into change and push us into, you know, maybe coming out of sadness. Sometimes some great things Mm -hmm. happen that we maybe wouldn't have pushed ourselves into trying or attempting or doing had that not happened. Totally. Totally. You found your look and found (laughs) found you through all that, right? (laughs) Well, and I have incredible people that, you know, cut my hair and (laughs) and give me tattoos that are very good at what they do mm-hmm. so they make me look better you know everybody's like oh I love your tattoos I'm like I had nothing to do with it I just <laughs> sat there <laughs> so, yeah. so yeah that's that's the tattoos in the hair all right well I think we're just about out of time but I want to ask a few oh couple more things before we go um so I think we touched on oh I wanted to ask because you also pl- uh, played with um, Malin Ackerman? Malin Ackerman? Malin, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Uh, yeah, I wanted to hear about that. That was on my nose. I'm like, Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, Malin has been a friend of mine f- for a long time. And she put together this, like, little project. Um, and I got to, we got to play, um, oh, my God, I'm I'm totally spacing out, um, the, the, the big film festival in Utah. Um, Sundance? Sundance. Yeah, we got to play Sundance, and then we oh, d- nice. we did this other, like, benefit show, and she is just, she is such a lovely person, and just very, very grateful for her, and grateful mm-hmm. that I got to work with her, because we had been friends before, because um, I played with her um, husband at the time. Mm-hmm. He was a drummer, and um, just, like, so loving and so kind, and, like, you know, like, when you meet people... And you really want them to be, you know, something special. And yeah. then they're not, you know, yes. like a celebrity or something like that. Or somebody in a field that you you respect. Yeah, or who you've looked up to or have seen a lot. And you yeah. Think, yeah, yeah. Like, and she is like all of that. Awesome. <laughs> and then some. Mm-hmm. So it was just a joy because she's just fun. So same thing. Like we've just like got to play music for fun, Mm -hmm. you know, and create something with people that I really loved and had been friends with for Mm -hmm. years. So yeah, she's 
lovely yeah that's <laughs> awesome um all right so we talked about yeah uh so just to make it clear too for people who want to see your um your videos on your own and not with fender they can see those at silverpickmusic.com yes dot com yes you can go check those out and um yeah so there's still stuff up on mahalo so just like how to how to play just about any song <laughs> especially from like six years ago and then i then i'm still uploading new stuff again it's kind of more based on like technique um so like for song videos i'd go to fender play but if you're like looking to really challenge your technique or learn some beginner theory that kind of stuff then that's all there and okay. i'm really wanting to dive more into like i said like the mindfulness and fixing mm -hmm. this because once this gets fixed this is a lot easier to deal with so mm -hmm. i i really want to expand that approach that's great that's great any other advice for people looking to play um just just go for it just go for it there's so many re resources out there to help you and um you have i'm gonna look at the camera i'm gonna get resources now. <laughs> do it okay you have the ability to do it like like i said if i if i can do it coming from ground zero anybody can do it and it doesn't it actually doesn't take that much effort. It's really like if you have five to 10 minutes every other day, you will make such an enormous amount of progress. Like you wouldn't, mm -hmm. you wouldn't even believe. So just go for it. Don't, um, don't wait. Don't, there's, don't wait. Because, you know, I always say like, look, how many times are you on Instagram? How many times are you on Facebook? You know, when people, I know people are busy and they're inundated with stuff and it feels chaotic, but if you have time to do that, like I'm on Plants vs. Zombies quite a bit. <laughs> <laughs> so I know I have more time to practice, <laughs> but it's like, um, you have mm -hmm. that time. And if you have that five minutes to do the thing that can potentially really enrich your life or even enrich your life by like 5%, because why wouldn't you want yeah. that 5%, you know, just go for it and that there's there's help and that at you can learn the way that you need to learn you don't have to subscribe to anybody else's learning style you can learn the way that you need to and you've you've got this you've got this you can do it and i think that's a wrap on that note Boom. those beautiful words drop the mic drop it drop, <laughs> yeah, drop the people <laughs> phone slam the guitar yeah. <laughs> All and right, we're that. done. Rock and roll, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. I love it. Thank you so much. You're so awesome. Oh, thank you um, for Can't wait me. to see what's next. Can't wait to see all the next videos. Maybe someday you'll inspire me to actually spend Come five. On. I would love to learn. Maybe I'll face my fear. Come um, on. I know. It's Come so on. beautiful. It's if I see you up on Instagram, yeah, I'm going to be like, like I know, right? <laughs> Five minutes. All right. <laughs> Tell everybody again one last time where they can follow you everywhere socially. You find me, Jen Tranny, on Instagram, Jen Needs a Nap on Twitter, and Jen Tranny Official on Facebook. <laughs> Woohoo! All right, Jen, yeah! Clap for me! Oh, yeah. Clap for yeah. me! Yeah. Happy Foundation! <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, and we're here every Tuesday. We'll see you here again next week. You can follow the show at Tom Girl TV, and I'm also at JJ Jorgens. Thank you so much, and we'll see you next week. Bye bye. <laughs> From executive producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, Buzz later. later. <laughs> The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.